Welcome to another video at the CPU Galaxy Channel, a crime video and the interesting story behind faked CPUs. In this video you will learn a lot about faked chips, you will see how Pentium CPUs were faked, how you can identify them and some technical details behind. Beside that we have the first giveaway on my channel, one of the faked Pentium CPUs from this video will find its way to one of my subscribers, but more about that later, so stay tuned for an interesting video with a lot of cool things you might never heard of. Yeah, so what is a fake CPU at the end? Well, just to sell a CPU for more money than it's worth in truth. This topic of fake CPUs is nowadays mostly affecting CPU and chip collectors, although there are some strange cheap newer Intel CPUs from China on the market now, but in the mid of the 90s it was a huge business. Let me give you here an interesting example and the whole story behind. So this kind of Pentium CPUs um, you could get in several speeds, from 75 to 166 megahertz. They all were basically the same CPUs, just tested and manufactured for different speeds with a certain tolerance, of course. A manufacturer will always define the speed to the highest possible performance under the consideration of high reliability. Just simple explained now. So the idea of the crime was to use these tolerances and reprint the CPU to a higher clock speed. For example, reprinting a 120 MHz CPU to 133 MHz or 150. Yeah, back in this time you just set on your main board the speed of the CPU you bought and that was all. So at the end you were overclocking your CPU and the outcome was that the system might become unstable or crashes by random. So some were more stable, some were less stable and you could not see the original clock it was made for in any software tools. In SpeedSys for instance you can only see the type and the core generation code and the set clock speed from your mainboard. So if you take a 120 MHz CPU, you overclock it to 133 MHz, it might run very stable but many also not really. So you might laugh now and say, come on, are 13 or 30 megahertz so much more uh, difference? Yes, back in the days it was and 10 to 20% more speed that cost a lot of more money. So you paid about 200 US dollar more for a 166 megahertz CPU compared to the 133 megahertz one. Yeah, here we have now four just come on Pentium CPUs, 133 MHz, 100 MHz, again the 133 MHz version and the 75 MHz version. So it's time now for the first riddle in this video. It's time for you to guess now and make your choice. Which one do you think here is a fake? Um, maybe you can see it already a little bit on the surface or so. Please leave a comment below. What do you think which one you could identify maybe as a faked CPU here? And I will solve it now for you. Actually this one is not a faked CPU. So these three over here are the faked ones and reprinted one and this 75 megahertz is the only original one. Uh, yes, I know it was not fair from my side because of the uh, Pentium uh, logo which is somehow more in the middle uh, than usual on the top of the chip but nevertheless this one is an original one from Intel. So I will put now the focus um, on this 133 uh, Pentium CPU so we can see here nicely A8502133 SY022 for the specification code, so everything looks fine so far. And also on the back side, uh, nothing strange. Intel Pentium processor engraved in the in the ceramic lid. And here again, the, the type number of the CPU is 133 megahertz. So usually you would never recognize that this might be a faked CPU. So how I discovered this in the past, so usually I use some liquids for cleaning the CPU um, to get rid of the thermal paste and all this stuff. And when I was cleaning the CPU, I could see 
that I get some strange color always uh, on the tissue. So I could not explain why I get the color of the ceramic um, here on the tissue. So this was already a, 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 a strange uh, thing for me and therefore I started to investigate on this topic. Basically, um, if we compare it here uh, with, a, with, a, with a common original one, um, the color looks somehow the same. And under the microscope I could see a difference um, of, the, of the laser engraving. So the laser engraving um, on the original CPU is much more smoother than compared um, to the faked one. So this was the first hint for me that something is strange here. Also the edge of the ceramic uh, looks a little bit different uh, through the microscope. So then let's go ahead, let's zoom a little bit in. So what I did was under the microscope I was trying to scratch a little bit and you could nicely see there is something strange. So you can get something of the ceramic and this it was strange. So let me show you uh, what is underneath this faked laser engraving. It should be a laser engraving, but it is not in real. So, so let's try to get this off by scratching. And you can see already we get off this coating now. You can see there is definitely something strange. So, let's clean this up a little bit. See? So, what we can see actually already, it's a 120 megahertz CPU. And here we have the surface of the original ceramic. You can see also nicely the color difference uh, now. So somebody put a lot of effort to put a ceramic look like coating on the whole CPU, make a, a, a faked laser engraving and reprinting this Intel Pentium logo to cover the real frequency. Let's scratch a little bit more. So you can see nicely, it's a 120 megahertz version. So 13 megahertz more <laughs> today. It, it it sounds not that much, but as I mentioned already, back in the days, it was a huge uh, step forward to have 13 megahertz more. Yeah. So also on the back side, everything looks fine so far. So they um, had also to fake this printing. So, and if we scratch here again, so always take care with these kind of knives that you don't cut yourself. So, and you can see, you can get it nicely off. So, then let's clean it a little bit. So, and what can we see here? Again, or underneath this coating, 120 megahertz. So, a lot of effort they put into this fake just to get to sell it um, as a 133 megahertz CPU. So, uh, very, very interesting crime what was going on um, with these CPUs. And actually, this CPU. I will give away to one of my subscribers. Um, from the technical specification, it's not that special, but from the historical and crime um, story behind, 
it's a very nice piece for a collection. So let me also give you a signature CPU Galaxy. So one of my subscribers will get this uh, nice fake CPU for his collection. Um, to make it a little bit harder for you, just answer one question in the comment. You might get the answer in one of my previous videos. Yeah, what is the TDP, the thermal design power of an air-cooled IBM 9221 thermal-cooled module? As I said already, you might find the answer in one of my previous videos. If you're interested to have this nice faked Pentium CPU in your collection, and you are the first one who gives the right answer in the comment below, you will get it for your collection for free. Yeah, then so then let me give you the, the whole story behind these fake Pentium CPUs from the 90s, which I could find in the internet. Over several years, the European PC market was flooded with falsified Intel processors. Over years, there seemed to be no chance to catch the scammers until 1996. Then the police managed to track down an international gang, who were then accused of tax and customs frauds, along with money laundering and falsifications of computer and components at a large volume. At 9 o'clock in, uh, in the morning of the 26th of November 1996, 30 officers occupied all offices and phones. Five officers, along with an Intel employee, searched the storage rooms and investigated on Pentium processors. Even the Intel guys had a hard time finding out the fakes as they were perfectly done. The mission, codenamed Goldfish, was a huge success. 2,000 police officers in 10 countries raided 400 offices and apartments in Germany and in the south and west of Europe. 12 people were being arrested and the officers got tons of files, computers and faked processors. Yeah, the chips had been bought in Europe and exported to Hong Kong and Taiwan, mostly on a legal way. The relabeled Pentiums were smuggled back to Europe to be sold at around 200 US dollars above their actual value. Yeah, those were transported by couriers carrying around 100 processors in their bag. So it was a huge business and 200 dollar more for one piece gives of course, a nice, uh, sp nice space for this huge crime. So what Intel did after this, I can show you this also. So before you could see here on these ceramic, ceramic lids underneath, this IPP, Intel Pentium processor uh, logo somehow engraved or embedded in this ceramic. Yeah. So this is just tells you it's an Intel process, Pentium processor and they were covering this uh, with some fake materials and reprinting here also the, the, the frequency. So actually this CPU, um, you could nicely see, I told you already now, uh, 1996, um, they caught all these cameras and this CPU uh, is actually from, uh, it's original one and it's from the uh, 1995 uh, 52 calendar week after 1996 we can see here clearly also original one it's a uh, calendar week 48 in 1996 they changed the ceramic lid underneath so here we can see i133 uh, embedded in the ceramic lid this indicates uh, already the original clock speed of this 133 MHz CPU. So this just should just make it harder uh, to reprint and, 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 and cover the ceramic lid. And at the end, of course, nicely to identify then the real clock speed in case of any fakings here uh, on the top surface. Yeah. So what else could I show you here? Actually, this ridiculous or strange, I cannot even say fakes because um, it, it doesn't look like at all as an Intel CPU made in China, yeah, back in the 90s. Uh, underneath, we can see here is uh, this CH for China, some Chinese symbols, and a very strange package. 
So this is somehow a sandwich package with different layers, a nice gold top, which says Intel MMX technology, Tillamook 300 MHz, bus clock 66 MHz, voltage 2 volts, no specification number, uh, nothing, no serial number, nothing which, which leads you really to an original Intel processor. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really a nice, I have no idea how I should call it, it's not a fake, it's a, a Chinese made uh, Intel processor. Yeah? So I will try to cover these chips in a future video with some testing in a main board. Um, Tillamook uh, is basically the, 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 the core name of the mobile version for these Pentium CPUs. There were also 300 MHz versions existing, so I need to find a board uh, which could run the CPU if it's really working. So very strange, somehow nice for a collection, but nevertheless for sure nothing original. Also this version here, very shining one with 233 MHz and this strange uh, sandwich assembly here and underneath it looks like a, a strange PCB. So uh, I was curious and I did some, some x-ray pictures of these chips because I wanted to know what is actually inside, how does it look like uh, inside and you can nicely see here um, the, the dice which are glued inside this package. Uh, more we cannot see, uh, but I expect that there is a, a Intel mobile version soldered or glued, however, inside this package. Yeah. Maybe um, I'm going to open one in a future video to investigate what is actually inside this strange looking uh, Chinese made Intel CPUs. What else could I show you in terms of fakes? Um, this is also a very ridiculous fake, which was bought of a friend of mine uh, on eBay. So this should be an Intel C404. So basically the Intel 404 is a very collectible and very expensive um, microprocessor for any collectors. So Obviously, this is a bad fake because this printing looks not original, but it's nicely made, however, and yeah, a fake, obviously. So as I mentioned already in the beginning of this video, nowadays mostly collectors are affected of these, these kind of fakes um, to pay a lot of money for chips which aren't the real one. Something other interesting I would like to show you here. So actually this is a 4086 CPU, original with 20 megahertz, but this is not a fake. This is real, a real one from Intel um, reprinted. So we had here first uh, uh, the first laser engraving, which got then deleted or covered by, uh, by a laser and reprinted with the, with the new number. So actually with 25 megahertz, um, the reason behind, I have no idea, maybe it was uh, mis-engraved and then they, they, it was cheaper to, to reprint it, it. But at the end, this is not a fake, this is a real Intel reprinted CPU. Somehow also very raw, maybe you can find one day one on eBay, but not easy to get. Yeah. Uh, at the end, for me it was very interesting to investigate on this topic, nice crime story. I hope you liked the video. If so, please leave a comment below, subscribe my channel if you don't want to miss uh, further content. Thanks for watching, take care and see you next time.